Welcome to your home hour, a program of interest to homemakers and their families, presented by the Home Economics staff at Iowa State College in cooperation with WOY TV. Here's Margaret McKeegan to introduce members of the RYP groups in Iowa, her guests for today's program. Good afternoon. Well, we do have our RYP guests today from Franklin and Winnesheek County, just as I promised you. But before we meet them, I would like you to meet Esther Rugland, who is the state RYP leader. And Esther, maybe you tell us what RYP is. Well, I think that's a good idea because I'm sure that some of our audience do not know what the initials RYP stand for. It stands for the Rural Young People. And we have organizations throughout Iowa. And this group is made up of the out of high school and unmarried young people. And what do the groups do, Esther? Well, you know, young people of this age are facing some of their, their important decisions. During this period when they decide what they're going to do for a living, where they're going to live, and whom they're going to marry. So it really is an important uh, period in their life. And they build their program so that it would help them to reach some of these decisions. I think if we look here at the chart, it will explain a little bit what some of them do. Their uh, program is threefold, education, recreation, and service. Well, Esther, let's go into those three uh, things just a little bit more. What would they do in their education program? Well, of course, education really covers all of it when you come right down to it, but we think generally of the education program involving their regular monthly meetings at which they have a program feature which has something new and interesting uh, to the whole group. And then they learn how to conduct a business meeting, to work on committees, and generally to work well together. And then what would they do in the service program? Well, the service projects are varied. Uh, we encourage each club to have at least one community service project. For example, last year, Worth County, uh, I believe, packed eight Christmas boxes. We had another county, Mills, for instance, that uh, helped in the flood uh, area. They organized a group and went out to help on that. I think I saw one group do a citizenship play, too, last year. That's right. We had a citizenship play here at State Assembly, and since that time, several counties have put on this play called Our Way for Groups. In fact, I think some have played before as many as, oh, altogether 1,500 people. It's encouraging people to vote and take more interest in their community governments. Then, uh, where are these groups? Oh, we forgot recreation. We mustn't forget that because I think that's probably one of the important things to the group, isn't that, it? That's right. Even if we forgot recreation, I know the young people wouldn't because uh, some of them think that is very important. It does give a, the opportunity for young people to get acquainted. And you'll find that they think that recreation should be a part of every monthly meeting. And then a lot of them have extra meetings, picnics and square dances and parties and tours to various events. And they go and visit other counties and have parties together and that type of thing. Now to get back to my other question, where are these groups? Well, these groups are located all over Iowa, and we have a map over here that I think you might like to take a look at. Each of these triangles represents a rural or young people's organization. You'll notice that we have the state pretty well covered, although we still have some counties that do not have an organization. And uh, is that a county organization, Esther? Yes, that's right. You see, most of these young people, or at least most of the boys, have their own cars, so transportation is no problem for them. And then they like to meet uh, uh, young people from other parts of the county. That's too. right. They can easily become acquainted. And then they do come in to Ames for the state assembly once yes, a year, don't have they? Yes, state assembly in March, and then in July, at the end of this month, we're having the leadership conference, and they'll come here for that also. So they do have the chance to meet uh, other young people from all over the state. Yes. A chance to get together and compare uh, ideas. That's I right. Guess. How do they go about planning their program, Esther? Well, each group has a county planning committee, and they start meeting in the fall of the year planning for the next year. But I think rather than us uh, talking about it, we might like to look in on a group who actually are planning a program. And uh, we find here a group of young people from uh, Winnishik and uh, um, Franklin counties who have been talking about what they're going to have for the coming year. And you'll notice that here on the board they have a list of things. They're going to have one lesson on military service. And are they ready for it? This they plan to take in January. Then in February, this group had planned that they would have a topic on preparing for marriage. This would be a film. And then they were going to have a lesson on uh, uh, what they need in the modern farm home. Then in April, 
you'll notice that they have planned a lesson on clothing courtesy. And uh, at, for this lesson, they decided that they needed to call in the clothing specialist to come to the county to help with this lesson. They planned the program, and Miss Opal Roberson, who's our clothing specialist, went out to discuss their problems with them. You, as RYP members, constantly have before you the problems of selecting becoming clothes for many different occasions. Your participation in this program will help you gain poise and give you some idea of social courtesy in the proper places. To illustrate clothing and courtesy for different situations, we have chosen to use some of the RYP members. You're going to enact some simple scenes that will give you a picture of what you do in the everyday events of work and play in your home counties. Now suppose we want to dress up for an RYP banquet or going to a wedding or just let us say the most dressed up occasion that we would ever have. Well, if you were the young fellow, you'd probably like to provide a corsage for the girl for this occasion. If the girl is wearing a coat, as Barbara is, she probably won't put on her corsage until she arrives for fear it it might not appear fresh. After all, many of these RYP members do live in the country and they have to drive several miles before they get to the church or the banquet hall. In this case, Dean helps her remove her coat. This is a rayon gabardine, water repellent, very fashionable, uh, general purpose coat. The striped taffeta lining adds color and a swish the girl's life. With this coat hung up properly, uh, Dean unwraps the corsage and he may fumble a little bit with the box and finding the flower and finding the pins, but he does get the corsage in place with the flowers up and the stems down, always. And I'm sure Barbara would always thank him for the corsage. After all, he didn't have to give it to her. Barbara has on an off-white rayon suit, dressy enough with pockets as trim, and the color puts it in a dressy class too. A single strand of pearls is her only accessories until she adds a little color with her corsage. Spectator pumps with high heels are right for this dress occasion. Dean's double-breasted dark blue all-wool suit is one of the dressiest of this type for men's wear. A white broadcloth shirt, immaculately clean, and collar points just right is still one of the best dressy shirts. His tie picks up the color of his suit and has just a little bit of contrast in color for accent. Now back to that corsage for a minute. When the boy mentions giving her a corsage, the girl might respond, well, since you gave me a corsage for another occasion, I'd like to make this one, and I'll have a boutonniere ready for you too. All the nice courtesies don't belong to the boys. The girls have equal responsibility for proper responses. Now the corsage might be one of many combinations, leaves, seed pods, burrs, and flowers. When the boy does provide a corsage, it's best for him to ask the girl what color she prefers with her suit or dress. And for a corsage to be pretty, it doesn't have to have an arm load of flowers. Often one flower in a bud with a little greenery and a little ribbon are sufficient. But flowers are an asset, and they don't hurt the appearance of the boys either. And so our friends are ready to take their places at the wedding or the banquet. One of the most favorable activities of this younger set is gathering for cold drinks or malts or sundaes or whatever you have. And it might be at the corner drugstore or it might be a movie on the schedule for tonight. But whatever it is, there's a right and a wrong way to make a date. And if you want to maintain your status in this group and have a date with the girl afterwards, it's nice to follow a few simple rules. And you don't have to be formal about this either. But on the other hand, a few reservations don't hurt. Darlene isn't playing the game too wisely when she hears Roy honking his car horn and coming to a skidding stop at the cur curb while he, she yushoos out the window at him. She deserves time to brush her hair and look her best. The girl should assume that the boy knows some social courtesies and will remember to use them. He could call her on the telephone and suggest that he is driving to town and could he stop by and pick her up and take her to the movie? Yes, of course, Roy, she says. And I'll try to be ready when you call. I'd love to go. So, content with the proper method of making a date, Darlene and Roy accept, and it looks as though there will be an enjoyable night. 
But what to wear for this informal occasion? Well, the local movie looks like a good, cool spot to spend a hot summer evening. So you and your friends plan to meet at the corner of May and 16th at 7.30. She seems to think your tie is just about right with that Daycron suit you're wearing, Roy. This suit is a blend of rayon, Daycron, and wool, and shows the latest fabrics for menswear. Daycron takes a crease well, so the trousers crease just stay and stay. The tie is 100% Daycron too, and has been washed but not ironed. The white broadcloth dress sh shirt, cool and crisp, is just right. Darlene has on a date dress of 100% nylon sheer with a taffeta slip. It has pure white background with a small black figure and a black velvet belt for accent. It helps that small waistline. A full, full skirt with just the swish that makes a date a certainty. A little late, but enough breath left, the second couple arrives. Pat's dress is new and the whole gang knows it. Had to press that hem after I got there, I know, thanks Wilmer. Well, it's worth it. It's Pat's rayon, salina cloth, dark blue dress with white accent in the yoke with just enough crystal buttons to give it a little glitter makes that dress a nice one. A circular full skirt with a petticoat gives the dress a chance to stand out as it should. Wilmer's plaid sport jacket is of lightweight wool. His solid brown slacks that are rayon and crease resistant uh, are just right for his sports outfit. His shirt is a sport type shirt that doesn't need a tie. So they looked at the local paper and decided that this is a show that is a must and they're off to an evening of fun where there won't be any po popcorn eaten until after they've seen the movie and then they can have all they want. But these RYP members don't spend all their time going to movies and banquets. A great many of them are professional people, teachers, office workers, and farmers. Their clothes must be the kind that require the least care possible, but must always be neat, inexpensive yet becoming, and stylish but not faddish. The children in the schoolroom like color and design in the teacher's clothes, and they love to see different garments worn from day to day. Even on a limited budget, several blouses and sweaters of different colors make the same skirt appear different. The fabric must be one that chalk dust or any other dust won't hurt. And Isla, in her brown and white striped denim, is a popular summer fabric that's going right into fall. A whole outfit with jacket and blouse, skirt and shorts. These contrasts of plain and striped material gives the design that children like to see. With and without the jacket, Isla has a different contract, a costume that interests the children. The man must look as smart and well-groomed as the woman. Ray's clothes are hard wearing. His jacket of all nylon, water repellent, with slide fasteners on the pocket and down the front. And it's also spot resistant as dirt doesn't clean. His shirt, small check rayon, crease resistant, uh, a sport type that doesn't always call for a tie. The rayon slacks of gray blue harmonizes with his shirt. All these must be clothes that last and last because money must be saved from this year's salary to work on that degree again next year. No day is too hot or hours of work too long for a group of RYP members to frame up a picnic right on the spot with baskets in hand and cold drinks gathered on the way as they leave the office or the farm. They gather at the nearest park or the pasture to eat and have fun. Often they don't have time to change the picnic clothes, so th those who can just join in with whatever they're wearing. Joe is going to enjoy this picnic in red, red sailcloth pedal pushers stitched in white. The white repeated in the blouse can be worn with skirts. The gray striped sailcloth jacket with big pockets and adjustable cuffs add comfort and convenience in carrying picnic gadgets. Bill is colorful in a blue rayon shirt that can be laundered easily at home, and his blue-gray slacks are sturdy enough for any picnic. Joanne and Isla are both wearing denims. 
Joanne's has this new style of pedal pushers that fit snugly below the knees with buttons and buttonholes for ease so she can get into them in just one big jump. Her plaid denim jacket repeats the color of the pants and a neck fastener will stand any strain. The hat also adds height, which Joanne needs, and it also protects her eyes. Isla comes from her desk in the schoolroom with her same denim outfit, but she pulls off her jacket and skirt because she has a job of building the campfire, so she's going to wear the shorts. Ray won't hurt his shirts and slacks because they're crease-resistant rayon, and even if he does muss them up, the wrinkles will hang out overnight so he can wear them again tomorrow. You can be sure the trip to the country will be enjoyed as far into the evening the sounds of singing by the campfire, charades by lantern light, and good fellowship for all echo through the woods. These RYP girls aren't fooled by thinking they can wear a pretty dress and get by without paying any attention to grooming. Good garments never make up for frowsy hair, curly manicured nails, or run-down shoe heels, or even a soiled shirt collar. The nationally known name of a dress is important, but not nearly as much as its fit, its lines, its press, and your figure. And no girl, regardless of her costume and her figure, can be well dressed if she wears pin curls in public. To be sure, you girls must put up your pin curls, but there is a time and a place for all of that. In your bedroom is a good place to spend some time on your hair. Pin curls put up there will save nervous gestures of twisting it around your fingers in church or at the movies. Get dressed for that occasion too, and relax while you brush and brush your hair and wear a house coat that can be cleaned as Levon is wearing. This is a cotton seersucker, glamorized with splashes of gold design in the background. It's a duster type house coat, opened all the way down the front and buttoned with gold buttons, just for glamour. It's easy to put on and easy to wear. Marilyn's house coat is of acetate, red with small white figures, has a circular full skirt that swishes as she walks, and a trim fitted waistline that's flattering to her figure. I'm sure both of you girls will remove all the bobby pins and brush and brush that hair until it shines before you appear in public. And while you two are having fun curling your hair, it's well to remember something about your shoes. Have you ever struggled on a hot night to get that knot in your tie just exactly right? All dressed up and ready to go to discover the tie hanging sideways and the knot isn't straight there is an easy way to get that tie hanging just right and the knot exactly in the center of the opening. Jim Bernhardt, Extension Youth Assistant from Winnesheet County, is going to show you how to tie the correct knot in a man's tie. The tie is the eye of the public, and that is why it's one of the important points or important parts of a man's dress. And so in picking out a tie, it isn't always uh, the most important thing to get the right color although it is one of the important features. It is also an important point to get the right type of a tie, such as a tie now like I have here, which is what they call a pattern tie. You see it has the large different figures or patterns in the tie. Now this type of tie is worn uh, with casual clothing or sport wear, but very seldom will we ever find this type of tie worn with a business suit or any type of a uh, a uh, suit which we might say is dressed up, such as either our business suit or a, a suit which we are wearing to go to church. Now one other type of tie which we do have is called the forelord tie. And this type of tie, as you will see, has a small pattern in. Now this type is a type that we, many of our business wear, men wear, or many men wear them that go to church. It's more of a dress up tie. You will also notice this tie has a square bottom on it. Now this is also a good indication, if you see a man wearing this, that he has been or is at the present time a college student. Many of our clothers say that this is a college type tie. Now in our ties, uh, we always will wear a rough or a coarse textured tie with a coarse textured suit, such as our tweeds. We can also wear our t uh, knit ties with uh, such suits as sportswear, or just plain casual clothing. Now another type of tie which we do have and can wear with several different 
uh, suits or sport coats or things is a regular pattern tie. And so I'm going to use this tie in, in forming a knot uh, on yourself and it is one of the very important things. No matter how good your tie is, you can spoil it if you don't have the right knot. So I will, I will tie a Windsor knot and start out by calling this with the wide part, the wide end of the tie, and the narrow part, the narrow end. And then when I make my cross, the loop will right, be right here between my throat and tie. Now we start out with having quite a bit of length on the wide end of the tie, so that when we, when we finish, we will have both ends at about the same length. So we start this by having crossing the wide end over the narrow and bringing it up through the loop and hold this tight with your right hand on the narrow end at all times. Come down the same side with the wide part of the tie, cross underneath and bring it up through the loop from over the top. Now that makes both sides of the tie even. Now at this time, you just merely take your wide end of the tie again, cross it over the top, bring it up through the bottom, pull it down, and then pull it through your tie. Now here's an important part that you always want to pull it down even, and then uh, pull it tight at both points, and then pull it up like that. Now that should make a quite an even tie, and your knot is even and balanced on both sides, and your ends are at the same length. Now this is the point that we like to see and the type of knot which always looks good in any kind of dress. You can imagine that a recreation specialist is one of the most important and popular extension staff members with this RYP group. After they have had their business sessions and educational meetings, there's always time for fun. Sometimes gathering around the piano and singing together showing films of camp life, reading or square dancing would be the choices. For square dancing, the girls like full, full washable skirts and colored blouses. The boys like blue jeans or Levi's and gay plaid skirts. Elizabeth Kaiser helped with this square dance. You watch these skirts twirl. Can start out and do some. Let's try the one called the first two ladies cross over. You remember that's the one where the first and third lady cross and change partners and then the two side ladies change. Now I'll go start the record and you can get your set in order and you'll wait for the music.
say, gents, cross over and all join him. Honor your corner lady, now honor your partner all. Swing the corner lady and promenade the hall. The first two gents cross over and by the lady stand. The two side gents cross over and all join him. Honor your corner lady, now honor your partner all. Swing the corner lady and promenade the hall. Now do see do with your corners. And now it's your partners all. Alum and left with your corners and the grand right and left. Now when you meet your partner, don't leave her there alone. Swing her when you meet her and promenade back home. scenes have been a few that you'll want to brush up on at your RYP meetings and practice and practice until they become a part of you. We feel better when we remember to be respectful to other people and that's really all social courtesies are. Well, if we're going to brush up at the RYP meeting, I guess the will have to find out how we can become members. How do we join RYP? Well, now any young person who is interested and comes within this age group can join. There is a, an organization in almost every county. They can easily get information from their county extension office or one of the other members. And if there isn't an organization, they can get one started, I guess. Well, that's right. There's you, always you'd room for be more. willing to help them get started, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, very much. That's my job. You know, Esther, I think there's another program tonight that would interest our RYT members, and that's the uh, one on... Um, uh, That's right. Going there, into the Army. Yes, there is a group tonight who are discussing over the WOI the, the problem of are you ready for military service? And I think that they would be very much interested in listening. And we hope that groups all over the state will be listening to the program and follow that with a discussion. I'm sure it's one that would particularly interest this age group. Uh, now, Esther, uh, I think I've heard something about your camp. Don't you have some? That's Our right. We've, camps during we've, the summer? Uh, we've just finished camps, Margaret. We've had three district camps, and we have one more that will be held. Do you a go party. out to those? Yes. I'll bet that's a lot of fun, too, isn't it? Yes, it really is. Well, if they haven't heard about the camps, then they might be interested in those, too. And I guess that's all the time that we have today for uh, um, RYP. And our program on Thursday is going to be about freezing and canning raspberries. And next Tuesday, Ms. Sunderland from the Child Development staff is going to come over and discuss choosing children's literature. I know that I've had problems in trying to buy a book for a child, and you probably have too. She may have some good tips for us. Goodbye. <laughs> Your Home Hour, the program you've just seen, is presented on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons by the Home Economics staff at Iowa State College. Be with us again Thursday afternoon at 3.30 for the next program in this series with Margaret McKeegan. The technical director has been Charles Hawley. Your Home Hour has been directed by Lamar Smith. <laughs>